Welcome in, folks. Sorry about the issue there, and thanks to Mary Jo for giving me a call, um, making me aware of the issue. <laughs> Glad I had your number. Yeah. <laughs> Thought, I thought everybody was just ready for Christmas vacation <laughs> and they were starting it early. <laughs> well, I thought maybe because I know somebody said they had had issues and you said you had answered, uh, this is before, something about Google. So I did, you know, I copied it and just put it in my browser and it, and it still didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the what the issue was there. It's something to do with Zoom. For some reason, it didn't recognize that the link that I provided was the same as the meeting that I had just started. So I had to end the meeting I had started and just start a new one. Very yeah. kind of pointless move, but it worked, so. <laughs> yeah, end result. Um, yeah, you, we're, we're familiar with um, some workarounds like that. So <laughs> some kind of quick moves. Um, well. It looks like we probably aren't going to get too many other folks joining. Hopefully, we didn't lose some folks with that um, issue. But I can just jump into um, what I was going to talk about with HTML, unless we want to start off with questions. I have a couple, but I mean, um, but we should do, you know, what you want to talk about. Okay. Well, we can, yeah, we can launch into that. Um, I am just going to show an example of how to embed a YouTube video. Um, mm. There's two different ways, actually, that you can get a YouTube video into um, your content. Um, embedding them is one way. You can also use the uh, YouTube URL to get it into the media library. So let's get to a demo site. And what I want to do is add a YouTube video to the top of my, or let, we'll add it to the middle of my about page, just to spice up the page that I currently have. Let's see what I have in the draft, so I'm not surprised. Okay, I have that link, um, the anchor link menu from last time. Okay, so I want to add a, a YouTube video. And why don't, while that's loading, I op uh, open up the um link to the video that I want to look at. So I'm just traveling over to YouTube um, because you will want to open up the video to like as if you're going to watch it yourself on YouTube. Um, this gives you the share options. So once you have the YouTube video up here, you have the share button. Let me zoom in a little. I'm not able to zoom in, um, but the share button is down here. Oh, there we go. Okay, it zoomed in a bit. Um, when you click on the share button, you have this pop up, and one of the options should be embed. I have an existing one. Oops, let me, sorry, I'm going to pause this and open that back up. So, share and embed. So, um, one cool thing about the embed option for YouTube specifically is that it gives you an additional option of when to start it at. You can specify a different start time than the very beginning. Um, if you go with the other option that we have in Milo to uh, insert a YouTube video where you're just using the YouTube URL, it will only start at the beginning, the video itself. Um, so this embed option gives you that flexibility to start it at a different time. Um, so to move forward, we are going to, you can either highlight and copy it with you know, your um, mouse or your keyboard, or use the copy option down in the bottom corner. Um, just any way to get it that code copied to your clipboard. Um, from here, I can just close this YouTube window. I don't need it open anymore. And now I'm coming back to my draft. So like I had said originally, I want to see this, let's say about here. This is kind of the end of a section um, and the beginning of a new section down here. So I'd like to see this 
um, right below this body section. But obviously, I have some additional text there. So we're going to move some things around. But first, I'm going to add in what I've copied, the YouTube um, embed code. So I add a third party embed code box in this section body with embed code. And we replace the text that's there. It's already set to full HTML, so I don't have to do anything but paste this in. Um, so now I have the YouTube video added in. But the way I have the page currently set up, it's going to show up under my back to top bottoms uh, button. So it's going to show up at the bottom of the page. So what I need to do is, I don't need to include that extra space or not, but either way, I need to uh, highlight and cut everything that's there um, and we can clean this up, uh, up right now but I'm just gonna go straight to the bottom and now add an additional formatted text box under um, the YouTube video that I've just added. So this allows me to more easily rearrange my sections without having to mess around with all of the HTML up here in the body itself. So now I have the formatted text box under and I want to make sure I paste it with the formatting. So do not paste as plain text, but paste regular. Um, and that's going to copy over all of your formatting that you just had um, where it was previously set. And then we can remove um, that um, space. And actually, why don't I... I believe that's deleting it. Let's check the HTML. Yes, OK. So um, it is a little uh, kind of funny looking here, but that has removed that extra space that I had added. Um, and now coming back up here, oops, I can either use the little eraser or let's use the button. Um, so to remove the button formatting, I just clicked on button again, and it kind of disabled it. It turns it off. Um, and then backspace to remove that extra line. So any questions so far? OK. So, so Amaris, so what you're doing is you're taking a chunk of text, and then you're adding the uh, a new box for the video underneath it, and then you're creating another text box underneath that and copying what you want under the video into the new text box. Is that correct? That is exactly right. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so then I'll go ahead and save this. Um, I don't need to make any other changes. I'll just save that as a draft. Okay, so um, by default, the um, video is always going to sit over to the left. Um, you can, I believe you would have to add the HTML tags, um, but you can add the HTML tag for center um, if you wanted to see it uh, in the middle, but it comes up with, I, I don't think I used the default time starter um, or the choice of changing it. So it is just starting at the beginning, but again, you can change up that start time. Um, why don't I, I'm gonna click on the share button. Does that not give me the link? Okay, so I want to um, just quickly show you the other way because I mentioned um, that there's a second way to excuse me, second way to uh, add in YouTube videos. So just like we did for the first one, we're making our way to the video as if we're gonna watch it on YouTube and we click on the share button. Um, this time, instead of clicking embed, uh, we don't need that option. Um, we, when we click on share, just need to copy the URL that's here. Um, and actually, it looks like you still do have the option to start it at whatever time. So regardless of which way you enter it into um, Milo, it looks like you're able to customize that. Let's try that. Um, so copy the URL that's provided. 
And again, I can just close that window. I'm coming back over to the about page. Um, and let's just work with the same page. Uh, the main difference with these two methods of uh, putting a YouTube video on your site, um, the first option where you embed the video is only available on that page that it's embedded on. So um, the second option, we're actually going to be using the media library. Uh, and it, with the media library option, obviously it's available to anybody that has access to the media library. So um, I'm just gonna use this blank space that we have here already to um, add in the YouTube video. So I'm using the media browser and instead of the default upload, um, upload tab, I'm gonna click on the web tab. Um, this method of uploading um, accepts YouTube and Vimeo videos. So you just need to have the proper URLs um, to be able to enter these. And I believe that, um, you know, these kinds of, U, it's kind of youtube.be, youtube.com, and I believe youtube.com slash watch. There's several different versions of YouTube URLs. They all, I believe, should work. Um, so if you have any issue, please do let us know with this upload. So then click next and with the magic of the internet, all that information as far as the name um, is filled out and you aren't required to say that you have permission to use this because it's already um, being put up on YouTube and uh, permission has been expressed by the original owner. So um, nothing else is required from here, but you definitely can fill out anything else. The file description helps when you're searching for this again in um, the media library kind of similar with the related issues and the media tags. But from here, I can go ahead and save. And once I submit here, um, I don't need to make any changes as for the display. Once I submit, it drops the video into that spot where my cursor was. Um, it looks like a screenshot of the video when it drops into here. Um, so when you are editing the page, it won't be super obvious that this is a video, um, but you'll always know if you ever highlight the item and you click on it again, you'll see, you know, the information about the item. Um, and the main difference between um, media like this, where it's a YouTube or a Vimeo video and um, documents or images, there's more options for documents and images here listed. So that's the, the main difference where you can um, tell the difference between, oh, this is a, a video that I've uploaded or um, any other type of file. So oh, hmm? I have a question. So you do you not need a separate box if you do it this way? That's right. You don't need a separate box because it is um, using the, the WYSIWYG toolbar so you can remain in the WYSIWYG editor the whole time um, if you use this method. Okay. So the above and below text, you don't have to worry about it. Instead of three boxes, you end up with one box with, with that link in there. Essentially. Yeah. 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 Because I could uh, just as easily have um, moved around any part of my text or whatever it is, and then drop it in, in, in that different spot. Um, mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and save it with both. Um, so we're going to see um, two different videos. And actually, I did want to show off um, what I had mentioned. If you do go with the um, embed option, HTML tags are always nice to have in your back pocket. And a, uh, the center tag is one that I, I usually use um, quite often, too. We have it in the WYSIWYG toolbar, but this is um, a pretty easy one to remember if you ever need to add it to um, your HTML. So it's um, the carrots with the word center and then um, HTML tags usually uh, come in pairs. So this is always closing out with the forward slash center um, within those carrots. Just to show the difference between the two positions. So let's save that as a draft again.
Okay. And let's see if this starts at two seconds. Okay. So it looks like the, um, I had chosen to start this video at a custom time. Um, that didn't get saved. So what I had uh, originally said, the embed option would be best for that. If you're looking for a YouTube video to start about halfway through, um, you, you'd want to embed uh, the HTML code rather than using the URL. But um, this is the much simpler option, um, the way that we use the URL. And then um, just a very um, similar version, but again, if you're trying to make some customizations to the time start. Um, any questions so far about that? I Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, no, for sure. is, is the embed available for all YouTube videos? I thought some some that when people put it up there, they they don't always give you all the the um, ability to, to the functionality that. So is that always available? I think so. As far as I know, you know, as, that I, I have my hands in the YouTube creator studio when I upload Milo office hours, I've never seen an option where I can limit the sharing options. It's kind of like if you want to share it, if it's made public, then it's made public. Um, I, I think that it's either you have it completely available or it's made private. Um, it might be the option of it being unlisted. That is usually available to folks that have a direct link to it, but it's not made public on YouTube. That could be a difference in the permissions, but I'm not entirely sure. Typically, if there's a share button, the embed option um, will be there. Okay. Could okay. you tell me what happened though? Why, why could we not get on and all of a sudden we could get on with I'm your- not, I'm not sure. We were talking about it and uh, it's something with Zoom where for some reason when I started the um, original uh, office hours meeting, it didn't recognize that the link that I provided was the same was the same. It, it was my personal meeting room link. And so I'm not sure where the disconnect was, but um, Mary Jo called and let me know that that was happening or what the message was. So once I ended the current meeting I had started, the one that I was waiting for everybody to join, um, and then I started a new one based on the link I provided, then it allowed me. So I'm not sure because it is the link that I've been copying week after week or month after month right, so right well mine didn't work and then it did work yeah it it wasn't until everybody's worked on um once i ended the first meeting and started the new meeting with the link i i provided um okay. but I'll, I'll be sure to keep an eye out because it the way that it happened i'm thinking that i probably could have just I, I might not have provided the right link um because it should have allowed people in if it was the personal meeting room link. I don't know though, because I I had the link in my recurring meeting and also in your uh, email and none of them worked. Same hmm. with me. They all okay. already were in another meeting. How weird. Well, it was as if you had actually started the wrong meeting. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's yeah. what it looked like. Hmm. Well, yeah, I, I did start it diff as far as um, my usual method of starting up the meeting. I usually go to my email and I'll click on the link that I have in my event calendar. Um, but this time I went to the Zoom account and I clicked start meeting. I don't know mm -hmm. if that had any difference, but that that was one thing that I know I did different today. OK, I want to go back but, to the to the uh, YouTube. Yeah. So um, we have a YouTube channel. So um, or whatever, or, you know, it's on there. And, and so somebody else usually does that. Um, what I have done, I think, is uh, uh, probably the URL that Zoom sends out. But when I'm in, somebody else has been able to do what you just did. But it sounds like if I had an article say that, you know, I was had a, maybe a calendar saying, okay, we're going to be having this meeting. 
And then we have the meeting. And um, so I wanna update the article and embed, I guess, the video. It sounds like where I would normally put a picture. Um, and I'm trying to think, I, I put it in the media library. And then usually what I'm using the media, media library for is for a picture, but I must put it somewhere else now that I'm thinking about it, right? pictures do go in the media library so you do have to upload them first no, I, and then drop mean, them what in am I, what, where am i putting I, I get the media i put the youtube in the media library mm -hmm. where where am i being asked to to place it to place it yeah thank you um, i'm going to go back into the draft to show that off and thank Sorry. you for that question no it um i think as we talk about it and if anybody is not clear hopefully as we talk about it some more it will become clearer but I think it's a great question because there are some places where you can't use these um, types of media, where it's the YouTuber Vimeo videos. Um, in these media sections, the main image and the alternate hero image sections, um, those videos won't be available um, because these file types are just restricted to image types. Um, but anywhere in the body, the so body. Okay. you could choose, like we said, anywhere um, within there. You can also add more um, paragraph boxes with this body with embed code section. So um, if you add more like this, the formatted text box, you'll have a chance to um, use the media browser again. So anywhere you have this little media browser button, um, that's a good indicator as to- Okay, oh, you and can... you're pointing to it now. I just thought about that as you were talking. So, cause I have used that before. So if okay. I already have an article and I want to stick a picture or a video in there, then I just put it like between the paragraphs or something. Yeah. It'll, yeah. Okay. As if just the same as if you're going to add in an image, it's a similar process. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Because that's much easier, I think. I mean, it's, it's not steps. anything to do with HTML. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, definitely. That's the number one thing. You don't have to cross over to the HTML side. And then it's it's also fewer steps. It's a lot simpler. Okay, I'll try that next time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I am gonna find a new page to play around with. But now I just want to show off how to embed a um, Google document. Um, we've seen some leagues do this. Um, usually, when let's just use the DEI page. Usually, when they want a document to display on the page. Um, you'll know, like we all know that in Milo, when you add a document um, into the media library and then you insert it into your content, it displays as a link rather than displaying the document immediately. Um, so embedding it from a Google um, Drive is one way to have it show up right on the page um, if that's what you're looking for. So I just want to make sure Okay, this is going to be an easy one to add to. Um, I have my Google Drive open here already. And let's use this. Whoops. I'm opening up the um, Google Doc that I have. And let's see. I believe I need to be able to view it. So and sorry instead of that word doc i'm going to use this uh, pdf so um from my google drive when i click on the pdf it it kind of opens up as if i'm viewing it it's displaying to me so uh with this um overlay we have three dots up in the corner for more actions when we open that up, let's see. I believe it's the share option. Oh no, I'm sorry. Let's see if I think it's open in a new window that might give us additional options because I'm not seeing. There we go. Okay. So sorry about that. Before you go on to more actions in this overlay, um, you do want to open this in a new window. I don't know why it doesn't give the 
option to embed the item from here. Um, so one more step, open a new window. Um, and then from here, kind of we're looking at the same thing, but now it's in a, its own new window. Um, we click on more actions, the three little dots and embed item is the second to last option there. Um, the good thing about this too, is that it warns you if your, um, like the restrictions on your, the sharing of your document um, are, are set up um, incorrectly or they should be shared more widely. Um, so be sure to either do that first or after, uh, even if you paste in the embed code and make those changes after, um, it will update accordingly. So we'll copy this to our clipboard, the um, HTML code that we have there. And I think I can actually change the share options from here. So if that's something that you have to do, you can click on more actions again and there was a share option. And I just need to change to anyone with the link. Um, so anybody with the link can be a viewer. Um, that's as simple as I can keep it. Um, if I wanted to beef it up and allow every single person um, more permissions, <laughs> then I can do more. But viewer is the bare minimum. Um, so we click done. And now the proper permissions are set on this document and I have the embed code copied to my clipboard. So I'm gonna come back over to my Milo page. And just as we did before, um, I, I do need to work in the HTML uh, because I have HTML code. So I have the option because this time, instead of adding it to the middle of the page, I just wanna add it to the bottom. So I have the option of just using the body and swapping it to full HTML directly um, from there and pasting in what I have because automatically it's gonna appear below everything else that's here. Um, or I can just do as we did before and add it into its own um, third party embed code box. So either, way will work uh, if you're wanting to see that item at the bottom of the page. So I'll paste that in and let's check that out. Okay. So instead of having a link to what, what would be add action alert um, and it would link to this PDF in a separate tab. We have it right in the page and they still have the option to open it in a new tab to view it, you know, in, in their full screen. Um, but that's one, one simple option um, that you can use with the HTML of your site. So the reason you could do it, and you know, I'm not a Google person, uh, Google Docs person, but uh, because it has, because Google is what it is, it can make, I don't know, URLs or something out of its documents. And I guess that's, you know, as opposed to like a silly, just a regular Word document. Oh, right. Yeah. It's a whole lot easier to share those kinds of things um, if you have a URL to it. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, these options aren't for everybody, especially if you aren't already using Google. Um, right. That would just be a whole lot more work. Um, but if you if your league is already in Google um, and you have documents, this this is a cool option if you'd like things to show up, um, have have more to look at uh, rather than just links. Can you change how big the the window is there that that gets displayed? How much of the document is in that window? Um, you can. You can control the size of like the container around. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, essentially the window, um, the go back to the draft, the measurements are in pixels there. There's the width and the height that you can, um, you can change. 
You know, one thing that I, I have done, because I didn't know how to do all of this, is create like a little screenshot of the thing that I want to link to and put it in as a picture and then put the link on the picture so they can click on the picture and it'll take them to wherever I want them to go. I like that. I mean, it, it works, but it's, you know, not the official way, I guess. But definitely, um, I, I totally understand that as a, um, it helps them identify where they're going to. So that exactly. that's really not, not to helpful. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Oh. Yeah, I love uh, the, the, the use of images as buttons because it really makes a difference. Um, and it's really easy to use too, that you can make anything a button um, with whatever image you have. Um, so with this specific um, HTML code, the width and the height are listed here. Um, there is another um, option where you can um, use a, another website to create or, or make this HTML code responsive. And responsive just means that it is going to um, change its uh, size to the size of the device that it's being viewed on. So it's always going to make itself the perfect size for a desktop, for a mobile, for an iPad, whatever it is. Um, so if we wanted to do that, before I would plug this iframe code in or this HTML code in, I would, um, I'm going to just cut it back to my clipboard. And the, the extra step um, is the embed responsively um, website. And let me throw that in the chat. And whoops. So here, um, embedresponsibly.com gives us by default a YouTube um, URL. So if you're going the embed, um, the, the way of embedding it, then you can just use the URL uh, from the YouTube video itself and add it here. Um, but because we're using a, an iframe coming from Google Docs, we can just click on generic iframe. Um, replace what's there with what you have on your clipboard. And when we click embed, it gives us a preview, which isn't really helpful because our screen is the same size as it was. Um, but we see that the embed code is, is definitely different. Um, so <laughs> now we can copy this. Um, and instead of what the simple iframe code we had, I'm going to paste in this, um, you know, beefed up version. We always want to leave that as full HTML. And once I save it, then I'm going to um, use the developer tools to change my screen size. So it is filling up the width of the Milo content area. So it's like about 800 pixels wide right now. Um, if I use the inspect option and turn on the, let's see, the different um, device uh, dimensions, let's see what iPhone X user would see. So as the screen shrinks for the, you know, to compensate for the size of an iPhone X user screen, the video also shrinks to that size as well. Um, typically when you have a, like an embedded item that has a static width and height, it will typically stay the same regardless of the screen size. So um, if you experience that issue, then embedresponsibly.com will be the um, easy solution. And let's see another, just see an iPad. Yeah, so um, let me turn that on its side and it continues to grow um, as we shrink or grow the, the screen there. Any questions so well, far? It looks, it looks like that iframe um, embed code is pretty simple. If you, It looked like you could substitute any PDF you wanted to 
if you had the URL for the PDF. I think so. Um, let's see the you're speaking of this one here. I'm going to put it in before uh, we well before we put it in the embed responsibly. Whoops. This one here. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, because all yeah. it has is a link to an H uh, to a uh, PDF and then the height and width. I mean, it doesn't. Oh, it says allow autoplay. I think um, <laughs> that, that it is all just pretty default, though. You can allow or have every other piece of it, and then what's highlighted just replace that, as you're saying, with a different um, Google Doc URL or PDF. Uh, any PDF? What? Or is there something special about this? I think that it is the Google servers that are helping to serve um, and, oh. and display this properly. So it might not work for okay. just any um, different service. It depends on if like the other uh, PDF URL, it, it would have to be uploaded somewhere else online because it's a URL. Um, I would believe that that source would have to have some kind of um, service to, to help okay. display this iframe. What does it mean to autoplay a PDF file? That I'm not sure of. Um, I would assume it might have something to do with it just showing up automatically that there's not a button you have to click to say, allow me to see this document or something. Mm -hmm. um, Doesn't autoplay usually mean as soon as you open it, it starts playing? Mm -hmm. But we this can is just PDF, you know, to you having to click on a play button. Yeah, but right. there's no play button to a PDF usually. I'm going to see yeah. if I can take it out and see what difference it makes for us. Um, because if it doesn't make a difference, then you you probably can go without it. Um, let's see. OK, it is still in the modified version. So we removed allow autoplay. Let's see what that does. Okay, it is the same. Let's make sure that all the all the functions work. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure why they have that in there. It could just be residual or I'm not entirely sure. But um, yeah, if you had other Google Docs, um, that basic uh, construction of the iframe code, you can reuse that and just replace it with different URLs. Um, any question, any other questions about that, that method? Well, I wanted to have you go back to, um, the embed responsibly.com and you, mm -hmm. there was an option for YouTube. When would, what would, how could we use that if any at all? Um, what, what would happen if I put a YouTube URL in there? So what, I don't understand. It would, uh, just like we saw this uh, little container, this little um, area for the PDF shrink and grow as we change the screen size, that's what would happen um, with the YouTube video if you entered it in embedresponsibly.com. Um, but before I get to that, I do just want to test out um, the, the current YouTube videos that we do have and see if they do um, move with the size of the screen if they do respond as they should. So if I go back to inspect and let's go to a smaller device. So I have an iPhone X. Um, the video is just set to a static size. So it's not going smaller or bigger. Um, for mobile users, it's, it's ugly for a second but it's not um, going to interfere with how they're interacting with your site because they can still click on a YouTube video and it would either open in a browser window or it would open in YouTube, the YouTube app. Um, but this is the main difference. If um, you do not use the embed responsively, um, it will not automatically shrink and grow to the screen size but it won't interfere with functionality if you do not do that step. So if I were to try and um, put in a YouTube um, 
using the second easier method you showed us, would mm -hmm. it make sense to before I even started or be, whenever I got the URL for the for the YouTube to put it in this thing? And then I don't know Then I don't know what it does I, from there. If you did it that way, um, let's actually do that. I have the URLs that I can just copy. Um, so I'm going to copy the link address. I just right clicked on watch on YouTube um, and coming back over to the embed responsibly.com. I'm going to just replace that with what I have. And embed. So now that I've sent it through the embed responsibly.com, that means I have to use the first method of embedding it. And I, oh, I, okay. okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, so that's why I say I say with the other method, the simpler method, you aren't um, going to give mobile users a roadblock. It's just not the prettiest thing um, okay. sometimes if it's not shrinking. But okay. um, yeah, just to show an example um, while we're here. So I copied the converted um, embed code. And I'm just going to replace this one. Hmm. Okay. So not only does um, like responsive mean that it it um, or it, in, in this scenario, it not only means that it responds to each screen size accordingly and um, shrinks and grows, but it also means that it fills up the uh, area that it's in, like it fills it up to the max. So the screen size on any device, it's always going to be to the full width of that. Um, and let's just check that out again. When we inspect, now we have a smaller version of it compared to uh, this is without it being zoomed out or anything. Um, we would see this uh, if it's uploaded. Hmm. So that definitely was um, a little bit more than <laughs> I was <laughs> originally going to, to share, but embed responsibly is just something, you know, in your back pockets not necessary to use, um, but just know that it's there if if you were looking to um, have things uh, set up a little bit differently on your site. Um, did anybody have any questions about that or we can just move on to uh, any folks that had questions? I know Mary Jo, you mentioned you had a couple. Well, I have some specific website things, but I did want to ask, um, there was, a, do you regular, does anybody regularly look at the Facebook, the new media thing. Well, anyway, you know what Facebook I'm talking about. Okay, so there was this conversation in there about Milo. So I don't know if anybody's looked at it lately. And I think they were saying, somebody was saying they have Club Express, which I just learned uh, looking at a recording of a state membership meeting that Club Express apparently has a website component to it. But I know there's a lot of people that have Milo that also have Club Express. And so I just wondered if you could clarify what that is even talking about. So Club Express is the, the service that the National League has um, introduced for leagues in for League of Women Voters organizations. So um we haven't had any customers milo customers that are using both services simultaneously oh, okay. I'm wrong. um it has been customers in transition so um if they were using milo um and club express it was because they were transitioning to club express okay. um but oh. it is a separate site and service from us completely and you can use some part of it you don't have to do the website part um, and we had the same question come up recently, and 
And I think some people thought, oh, now I have to convert my whole Milo site to Club Express. But you, you can keep your Milo site and just use the, I mean, they do have some good functionality yeah. that they provide, but it, uh, keeping track of members or thing, I mean, we're still learning too about it, but it was kind of, it was kind of dumped on us in a way at first, I think at the national convention where people thought they had to convert to it, but I, I don't, I, I, I never mean, got that impression. Well, that's good. But I, after the national convention, the way the people in my area were talking, it sounded like they were all gung ho club express. And then it turned out, I mean, once you've made the effort of putting things in Milo, who wants to go and and do the huge job of converting it over to another another platform? Right. I don't know yeah. if the uh, the rest of you feel that way, but I I told my my president, well, if you want to go to Club Express, I, I'll resign from this position because it it's a huge amount of work. I just thought it had to do with um, taking care of your members in an easier way, like for larger leagues or something. I didn't know anything about any website. Well, that's part of yeah. what they sell, and it mm -hmm. it actually is lo located pretty near to where I live, up in. Um, Schaumburg or someplace. So people were thinking, oh, that's nice. It's nearby. We we'll, <laughs> we can have good support. And there are leagues that are going to the website, but they oh. probably haven't put the effort into Milo that all of us has. Well, yeah. I'm just confused. So you're saying when you say the league is, you I don't know if you use the word push, but they were suggesting that people use it. They have like an account where maybe you get a cheaper. A, I think I think price. it was I think it was something like that. I don't know if that's price still price. in uh, still in effect. Um, but when they did come out with the the partnership with Club Express, they you know were advertising it to all leagues. So I don't know wow. if there was ever like a a push for you need to do this or anything close to that. But oh. um, there definitely was a a point in time where I, I there was a lot more um promotion well, around I don't know it. where I was and I was struggling <laughs> for four years maybe I just ignored it I don't know but you know talk talking about the National League you know I don't know if anybody read we just got something about stuff going on for next for Martin Luther King uh day in January and the, there were a few graphics but you know I don't know Amaris if anybody from your group ever talks to to Washington about Milo and stuff, but um, it would be nice um, for people like me that don't know much about it is to have like, I don't know, camera ready graphics, you know, like something, you know, if they want us to push for voter rights on, Mar on Martin Luther King Day, give us me, give me something that I can stick right into the <laughs> uh, slideshow you know that i have to worry about the sizing and all that kind of stuff i don't know i just it just occurred to me because that's what i would want to do i'd want to put it in a slideshow and then i'd make it the first thing you see i don't know just right. that kind of thing because yeah. they, they give us a stuff and they think that i don't know that they were so knowledgeable <laughs> yeah i mean it definitely would be helpful to at least have some kind of media or an example at least um yeah, that is a good idea that I could at least bring up to um, our communications manager. Um, I think that she might be in communication with um, the communications director or manager at the National League. So we'll see how far we can get that. <laughs> yeah, you have to deal with various platforms. So, you know, we, we're 800 by 400 for our slideshow, but other web masters oh. may be dealing with doing it in club express or wordpress they you know they may not have the oh. same requirements it's true. But, but my my it would be nice if milo in, worked in conjunction to make those more compatible with milo well if there are images um provided then typically we can tweak them to to um, get them to the right measurements um, but 
you know, using using a third party um, image editor. Um, but, you know, that that we could tackle as we get there. Yeah, because that kind of question, I mean, I don't know how many leagues there are nationally, but the, most of us have websites and they want us to get the word out, you know, well, you know, don't have <laughs> everybody doing their own thing. It doesn't make sense. On a completely different topic, um, I did a little um, article and I, uh, I, was, I typed, please submit questions in advance to, and then I, um, you know, put like a, a, I don't know, here or something like that. And then I put it in the box and I put mail to, you know, info at. And then when I looked at the article, the, um, the, the email didn't show up. And does that make, has that ever happened? And so I ended up just typing, you know, the, the, the email address, but I didn't, you know, make it, uh, you know, you, oh, you didn't make it a, a mail to, uh huh, because it wasn't showing up, and I, I never had that happen before. If, um, and it was just one single email. Yeah, it was just that one time, so I don't know. But I mean, that's the, that's the what I do though. I, I, uh, I uh, please submit questions here or something like that, and then I would highlight that, and then I'd go into the to the box and I, instead of a URL, it's gonna be mail to colon and then the address. It was an info ad, does that make any difference? I don't see why it would. No, it, it wouldn't. Um, and I will double check on um, what is going on there because we do have a, um, a service on our system that helps us protect our email addresses so um that oh. could possibly be interfering i think that the solution would be to when it's one single email address um to not use the mail to colon and, and add all that you can just simply type it in and leave it as if it's not hyperlinked because well, that's what when, I did. okay yeah. and once you saved did it stay there and yeah. and Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll double check to see if that That's is due so, like, to this. Might have been a security thing. Yes, and um, you know, it's it's not the expected result, but it, I think that it might be that security module that's helping us to protect okay. emails, well, and feel, it's just I feel a little better. Yeah, <laughs> it's working overtime on that. <laughs> well, you could do a real quick test to do what she said she did and see what happens. Well. Well, as far as what happened, I, I totally understand what that is, but I do need to look into um, the module that's being used and if there's like um, error, known errors or things like that um, for that specific one. But that's how it might work is that it just would not, it would, would not show the email at all. Yeah, and it, 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 it's probably to try to protect it from bots. Um, yeah, okay, okay. But instead of uh, adding the link on top, you just um, type it in and that should be the way to go. Yeah, that's what I did, yeah, yeah. Um, just when, when you say you didn't see the email, what did you mean by that? Do you, did you expect the email to show instead of your here as a link? Um, well, you know what, I think I might've, um, now that I think about it, I probably, type because it was a very small email and it made sense. I think I probably had typed that and probably highlighted that. That's probably oh, what I did. Yeah. Well, let's see. I'm going to see if I can try to recreate the issue. Um, yeah. I'm going to. So I have this email up top. I'm just going to leave it typed out like I have it. No hyperlinking of it. But this one down here, I'm going to add the hyperlink that essentially is um, the same um, information that the uh, Milo system adds to this one up here once I save it. But this, uh, for the second one, I'm gonna add it in myself. So let's see if the second one doesn't show up. Okay, it does. Um, so it could just be that it happens sometimes and sometimes does not. I, I definitely need to check in on that um 
to see what the cause is there. But if it does happen to you, um, on another email. leave it, leave it uh, just typed out all the way, and yeah, that should that's be what, the. That's what I did, yeah. But you also, if you if she had put email at here, and then put in mail to, and as she originally said she did. Um, that's the third way you could do it, where you don't see the the actual email address. You just see the here with a link on it. Oh, this is similar too. Um, it's essentially recognizing this as just text that I typed out. It's not recognizing it as the email. Um, so it's essentially the same thing. No, um, but she, but she is well, but she seemed to think she should see visually. At least that's what I was understanding that she should see the email showing. But if you put here on a link, it's not going to show the oh, email. Was was that the original situation, Mary Jo? You know, now I'm getting so confused. Um, it's funny because you know when you you know when you type pages from your website, you get this extraneous information, sort of other. I don't know what it is, other coding or something. But so when I type, when I printed it off, it says, "Please submit questions in advance to," and then I've got mail to. Um, I wonder if I had just now. Now I'm confused. Okay, so it says to mail to and then it keeps going. What yeah, what does it say after at, that? Does it have a, a info closed carrot? Info at dearborntransition.com. Is there a closed carrot? No. Hmm. So <laughs> it might have just been the email address directly, like this. Um either typed out like this or it was typed out like this with the uh, manual mail to um, link that you would have added on top of it. But I'm gonna test this out again. I just replaced um, the email address that I had it here. I just typed in the word here and removed the other text that was there. Um, and in this way, like Liz was saying, we're not going to uh, see the email address until we click on it. Um, yeah we just see the word that that we were using instead yeah and now i'm embarrassed i'm not now i'm not so sure what i did i mean i want to play around with it and i'll report next time yeah for sure and no worries i mean that that was um helpful to talk about before. too yeah and then um, um, just a real quick um so is there any way sometimes i'll use the summary part because mm -hmm. i don't like the the way it's it's capturing too many words and anyway i put something in the summary but like the other time i was making an article about the um of the recent uh uh well some court case and i wanted to put it in italics but when you in summary you don't have any of those options do you um not directly in the summary but okay. you can use the 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 WYSIWYG, you know edit the the stuff in your WYSIWYG and then yeah. copy the HTML from there. Um, okay. We've we've done that work around before, um, okay. but yeah, you can't, you, you would have I to use HTML. I to make HTML. sure that I wasn't doing something wrong. You would have to use HTML directly in the summary. Um, Jan, I see your hand is raised. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me okay? Because sometimes when I speak, I don't, I don't seem we to be. I can hear you just go. Mm -hmm. um, uh, is anyone else having trouble signing up for that um, uh, Go Google Calendar that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So are are y'all able to reach the page or? No, no. 404 um, error. Well, and is it, uh, is it when you click on the link from the Google group? Yes. Okay. Um, Instead of clicking on it from there, because I'm assuming that there might be something going on with the Google links. Um, when you, anytime that you add a link into a Google group message, it always adds a bunch of characters to that URL. So it might be causing an issue. Um, so instead you can go to the Milo documentation page. 
use the, the link that I just uh, put in the chat. And yeah, yeah, I, I do not see that calendar. I get a I full, don't either. Are yeah. we not subscribed? So, so are you able to get to the page? Yeah, yeah, I get to the page. I just can't see the calendar. Okay. So that I was not um understanding that correctly. So the page is working. Um, but the calendar, I think this might have to do with my own sharing settings. So I can just handle this offline. <laughs> yeah. Did everyone else also get just like a blank box? Yeah, yeah that's what I've okay. I just looked at. That's what I've got. Yeah. Because I thought it was me. <laughs> well, what's supposed to be on there? The Milo office hours? Yeah, it's it's a very simple calendar that only has the office hours oh, on it. Okay. Yeah, um, okay, I see yours. Okay, yeah, ours is blank. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, okay, I think it's because I didn't make it available to the public. So <laughs> let's try. I think yeah. if you just refresh your page, that yeah, should like hopefully do it. I got yep. or wait, no, let's see. I got it. It doesn't say office hours. Oh, mine it, oh today is the 17th. That's why it's lit up. Yeah, it, it's working now. Thank you. Hey, oh, okay, yeah. awesome. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it didn't work for me. Okay. And hopefully you should be able to just to subscribe. Um, I subscribed to it as well, just so that I could see, I think. I can't remember. I subscribed to it or I, I set up to receive notifications. Um, and it is a little, it wasn't very helpful. It reminded me of today's office hours 15 minutes before it was going to start. So um, as far as the notifications go, they might not be super helpful if you're, you know, just trying to rely on it to remind you during the week. Um, but at least we're subscribing to it, you'll have it available to look at and you'll see when the next one is or when the mine's, next ones are mine says events from one or more calendars could not be shown here because you do not have permission to view them not and you did the mine. page refresh yep hmm um let's see if i can look we at this to, on a different user because yeah. i'm i'm logged in to to my google account so that might be why i'm seeing it as it should um, Do we have to subscribe or something? I don't think so. Let me try. Yeah, so I don't think that's, that's what it looks like for me. Public URL for this calendar. Mary Jo, do you have that same error or you had well, seen it? Well, it's not an it. error, but I, I haven't subscribed to anything. I just clicked on the link and what I have is what she's showing now. It just it just shows today's date. I see have, if I'm going to yeah. look at the public calendar. No, that still is not displaying what I want. Hmm. OK, so it looks like I might have to spend some more time with this. <laughs> yeah. I thought this was going to be easier. Yeah. Um, it's certainly it nice to have it's nice to have <laughs> right yeah i thought i thought you know this is going to be easy it's going to be you know a, a calendar that folks can look at that's the, that was the number one thing because i didn't like the fact that everybody had to rely on the yeah. uh-huh um so google is not oh, making so my life this, does it have the link in it too yes on a, on a um let yeah, me okay. go back to the other green where is that well, that's all right i just i assumed it did but um yeah so it's like uh the way a zoom invitation looks it has the link oh, oh of course and of all course, the meeting details just like a regular google okay of course mm -hmm. um hmm. fair with specific people no you might want to put 12 p.m p whatever it is specific <laughs> Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, it doesn't allow me to, unfortunately. Oh, okay. It only allowed me to add the time zone down here in the bottom. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. Um <laughs> hmm. yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Um 
let's see, I'm going to poke around. So, Unless other folks have other questions, I can definitely do this offline because uh, it won't be um, beneficial to just watch me do this. It definitely, once I'm done, it will help. Um, but Maddie, did you have a question? Well, I was just going to say, I embedded a, a Google Calendar on our website. And as far as I know, everybody can get to it. So I'm just, I don't remember exactly what I did. But okay. you also have it embedded, right? I do. Yeah. Um, my thought right now is that maybe I need to replace the URL. Um, there it is. No, that is not it. I am not entirely sure. Well, we can wait. I mean, you can do it offline. We don't. Yeah, and especially if folks have other questions, um, I, I just added uh, the embed code because um, I'm already in here, and it does look like it might be different. Um, but certainly, if if other folks have questions, we have um, some more time to go over that. Did Jan still have your hand up? Because I think that that was um, about this. It looks okay. like that it's was unfortunately not the solution. Out. Well, you know, last time I raised a concern about um, copyright of images and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so I took some off, but I was looking at this one that I, on advocacy that I thought that I had seen somewhere where I thought, oh, okay, I, this is safe. When I, um, bef and I did remove it, but before I removed it, I looked at it um, as an administrator and on the bottom of it, it said advocacy one milo.jpg. And I, I don't I don't understand. Uh, That's the file name. Advocacy one uh, milo would have been the file name, and then dot jpg is the file type. Right, I understand, but where did that come from did it come from when i put it in the met in the media library is that how it entitled it because most well, likely other stuff has that um it would have probably been taken from what the file name was from your device when you originally uploaded it or whoever originally uploaded it well i mean i think i'm the one that did it but i found it somewhere else but i think i up uploaded it but mm -hmm why i've never noticed that on anything else that i've done where it actually says milo or do, or do they all say milo and i just never noticed it it doesn't anything? it doesn't add anything to the name um if it was the file name then it was taken from the device like the 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 name of the file that it was in the device that you originally uploaded from well i don't understand what you mean i mean it's just i just took it from my pictures on my computer and it didn't have Milo at the end of the name because that's usually what happens. Uh, I see what you're saying. It's okay. Maybe I put my little note there for myself to use it. I, it doesn't sound like something, something like I that. would do though, but, but maybe I'm, I, hmm. Cause so, typically when the address ends with the file type, the portion before it is, is it's not. What I, it's what I named it when I put it in my pictures file. Right. Um, and and regardless of if there was a change to the name, once you uploaded it to Milo, that that won't change the I URL that you're referring okay. to. I just I wish I knew a way to know that something is OK. And I, you know, I just. Um... <laughs> you mean to use? Yeah, to use you anything, mean legal? Oh, I see. Hey, you know, I'm thinking, would you guys want to take a look at the page where I have the calendar embedded and see if you can see the events on it. Oh, just, for sure. Just oh. to see if my code actually works the way I think it does. <laughs> I can travel there and I'll drop the link in the chat. I do that as well. Okay, well, I can put it in the chat also. Oh, awesome. Thank you. I do that as well on my website and it works fine. I know it does. So, and that was shrinking and, and, and expanding the window and oh it, that's nice and the calendar shrinks and expands you know oh, yeah 
Wow, that's nice. I, I can send you guys that embed code that I have so you can see what's in it. Where did you get it? Where did you get it from? Did you from when well, from I got it from Google? I, I went to the Google okay. Calendar and it had some stuff about sharing and it gave me the HTML for it. So, oh, to, and allowed the resizing and stuff. Which surprises me because I was looking at the HTML and it was it had like dimensions on it, but I think those might be like default dimensions or maximum dimensions. But I can send you guys that HTML. Just well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, and that gives me an idea. I feel like we've seen Google calendars often, so we might do that for our next. Um, that would be great. As office hours. Suggest. Okay, so we yeah. haven't done one yet. Then okay, that's okay. Mm -mm. Yes. Yeah, so yeah yeah because yeah, cool. once i learn how to get mine properly up there then yeah. i'll be a whiz at this that's but nice. of course that's different than the cow the events that we have in milo they i mean they're completely right. different items so uh, you can't... so maddie where do you have it on your website uh, uh it's under calendar it's oh i see you get a separate calendar. okay uh-huh on meeting calendar you get it okay Oops. Do you have do you use the calendar of the events in Milo too, or you just do Google? Yes, but they're, you know, they're they take a lot of hands-on maintenance. Is that the upcoming events? Uh yeah, you know, and I have I have the events showing at the bottom of the front page and and actually the in the um the other, yeah, the upcoming events goes to our events and then the uh, meet the members those go directly to the events that I have to change every month in fact I probably haven't changed them since the last time since we just had one two nights oh. hmm. so hmm. yeah but I you know I have to keep going in there and and fixing the dates because I can't make them recurring. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's maybe uh, something you could say to Milo. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, you know, it's a feature. It would be a uh, to a ask feature. about recurring. Yes, I think yeah. I have requested that if I'm yeah. not mistaken, right? It is yes, and it is definitely on our wish list. Um, a, a very nice one on our wish list, but um, we are unfortunately focusing on on other things. Um, yeah, just you just due to prioritize. yeah. I understand. Yeah, it's definitely one of those really nice ones, but uh, a bit a bit pricier as far as all of the improvements and modules go. So what I really need to do is I just set a, need to set a, an event on my own calendar that's recurring that reminds me to change it. That's what I need to do. <laughs> you know, um, Amarice, excuse mm -hmm. me. So I, I had another example here. I didn't see it at the time. And it's one of those, everybody uses it, where you've got hands up, you know, get involved. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that one's okay because everybody in the world uses it. Oh, all for right, sure. I've taken it down. <laughs> but when I saw so when I was in administrative mode, I was looking at the picture in the, you know, uh, uh, revise or whatever it is. Um, and it says, get involved from Google. And then it says, efree.gif. I would never have written that. So I don't know if anybody knows. Did you originally upload it? I saw or, it somewhere, probably. Yes, I think I did. Yeah, I will go. I'm going to go back and look, just like I, I am on the advocacy. But um, it's just not. It's just not the way I would, you know, write things. So somewhere that came from E. For, unless, you know, maybe where I got it from on the website. Maybe that's that's. I don't know. Maybe it said it there. You know, I, I don't know. Well, as far as the URL, it's not a big deal. Um, it's not going to affect the use of the file or. Oh, or... I know. I just want to find. I would like to find something that I know I can use without worrying about getting arrested. That's what I'm saying. You know that it's at the bottom, and does that mean? Oh, this is okay. Oh, I see. That that's not going to give you an indicator about that. Um, 
Well, I actually, actually um, I, I was doing some for Christmas and I, I got a Charlie Brown thing and it was a Creative Commons and it said right on there, Creative Commons and then some kind of permission or something. So I, I don't and, know. And that's, and that's just based on the file name that was that it was added with. So that yeah, right. original uploader was okay. helpful in, in adding that okay. information there. Okay. Um, yeah. But one one way that you can um, check is to do a reverse Google or reverse image search on Google. Um, Thank you. So you can usually pick up and drop an image. So let's see if I can. Um, I've done this before and I didn't know how to do it. Okay. Maddie, I'm going to use this um, image of the restaurant there. Let's see if I can. Sorry, I have to move it to a different screen. So I'm dragging it. I clicked on the image itself. Let me just okay. show what I did. So I'm clicking on it and moving it around like this. At first, it gives me that, you know, uh, no symbol. Um, but once I drag it over to my Google window, uh -huh. it turns into a little plus sign. So I okay. drop that in. Um, and when I do a Google search, it lets me know. And actually, this is one way to do it. Um, Let's see, image.google, I think is the way that we want. Oops, image.google.com. Google. Okay. Yeah. So images.google.com, um, this allows us to drop in the image. So just like I did, I clicked on the image, drag it over here. And when I drop it, instead of it using the URL, it's going to pick up the image itself. So now it's going to search the internet for this image or anything close to it. Typically, if you are using an image that is already out there, it's going to um, do a good job of finding those matches um, with an image like this that was probably taken by a person. By there, There's not going to be copies of it, but it's trying to find visually similar images. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do get results with matching images. Um, which is super helpful. So yeah. that's that's I, a, a one way to to, yeah. to look, at. look for it. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And then um, I wanted to point out what Jan said in the chat because um, that's super helpful. The calendar code um, that we were looking at for Maddie's uh, for the Ventura County site, the width um, was set to one hundred percent. And that made a difference in it shrinking and growing. So um, that could be a really quick and easy trick to use on your embed code um, rather than opening up embedresponsively.com and going through that. Um, you may just try where you see width in the um, HTML, remove the static number that's there. It's usually gonna be um, some number that's interpreted as pixels just add 100% or 75%, 50%, whatever you want it to be. Um, but that will, as long as it's a percentage, will guarantee that it's moving with the screen resolution. Yeah, great. I, I vaguely remember doing that, <laughs> but it's been a long time, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally understandable. Because, because the height is fixed. And so when it gets skinny, it gets taller, you know. And that you could even um, set to a percentage as well, but then right. it might get messier. Um, and harder to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Thank you for bringing that one up, Jan. Um, back back to the, the images and searching, mm -hmm. I might take a picture of the uh, U.S. Capitol. It, no, I've taken it. It's mine. And if I go into this Google of search, I'm sure there are plenty of ones that would look like that. But that it's still mine, right? I should be able to use it. Yes, I, I, I believe that um, it is still going to produce a, a search like we saw where it, you're probably going to have a whole lot of results for visually similar images but you yeah. should still have results let's say if that image you, you you're searching for is being used somewhere it should still like we saw um for 
the image for um, from Maddie's site, it should still give you the exact matches. Um, I don't think that it would um, provide matches that weren't actual matches um, I, because I would imagine that the metadata of the image is coming into play as well. I'm not entirely sure though. Oh, okay. So that is a good method. Yeah, um, it, yeah. Especially if you are really unsure, that that's one good way to see where else in the internet world is being used. That's great. Yeah, I like that. So you just you just click on the image, hold down your your cursor button, drag it over to the Google search window or line, and that. That's how you do it. Is that right? Yeah. Let me see if I can. I'm going to, whoops, have two, two windows. Screen. Windows. Yeah. I'm like, I, why don't I just do that so that I don't have, so I can actually show um, what this will look like. Okay. So again, we go to either image or images.google.com, whichever one you type, it will get you there. And let's search for making democracy work. So I clicked on the image. I don't even need to save it to my computer. Once I drop it into the area, it um, will start to upload the file. So let me make this bigger. And so this is a good example where we have a lot of different versions of this um, image. Visually similar images um, are listed here. And let's see. I'm going to make it smaller again, just so we can see the original as I go down. Um, it's not showing me the images on these pages, but it does say that these are matching um, images. So let's check this one out. That's images.google.com. Is that right? Images.google.com. That's right. Well, in that case, it looked for the words, obviously. Yeah, it looks like it is not picking up the image there. Robert Putnam, he's the one that wrote uh, Bowling Alone. Oh. Yeah, that's funny. It, did, it searched for the, the language rather than the image. Um, but again, it did provide matching images. The list is, is pretty short. Um, and it would allow you to, you know, search easily, easily pick through those and see, okay, these are not showing the same image. Um, yeah, the, neither is this one. But it would be fun to take a picture of yourself <laughs> and see, see how many matching images there are <laughs> online. You might be surprised. You'll see somebody might be catfishing you or something. <laughs> Wow. That's that's some fun right there. If if you get bored, go the selfie route on the on the image search. That sounds some, like some fun. <laughs> what does cat catfish catfishing mean? When somebody is impersonating you online. Oh, okay. oh dear. <laughs> there is another Maddie Park somewhere, and I think he's a black musician. Oh. <laughs> Back in the beginning, I used to be, you know, get get mixed up with him. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. Oh, great. Oh, stuff to try out. Yeah. We have all these tools Ooh. available to us. Um, Do you have these listed someplace on the uh, Milo training uh, materials? I don't, but that's not a bad idea to just have a running list of resources. Um, just kind of like random tips that you can search exactly. through. Random tips. I keep, you know, whenever you give us one of these, I tend to put it in my little how-to, but it would be nice to be able to, you know, to have it someplace where I know I can find all your goodies. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for, for that recommendation. I'm all, um, I'll do my best to try to keep a, a running list of that stuff because um, I know I have some already that I can put out there. Well, you have some for the mailing, you know, uh, HTML and stuff like that. I know I have those somewhere. <laughs> Grace, do you have um, a recommendation for clearing out old stuff like 
taking down things that are over a year old? Or is there some sort of, you know, how, how should we keep up? Um, we, we don't really have like a policy or a, or a uh, you know, recommended timeline. Um, let's kind of just poke around our we, state. We, we Women Voters has something. It's it's the article they're talking about. Again, copyright stuff, but it does suggest that you keep about a year's worth. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That that's that's that makes total sense. Um, and because of the work that we're in some people might need to be looking back a little bit further yeah. than just, you know, a, a month yeah. or two. Um, I will say that at least on our latest news, and this is the California League, um, we have about a month's worth of stuff here. Um, that's not to say that, you know, this is the best practice, um, but this is just one example. I think that on during less busier times of the year, we probably do go further back. Um, we just do have a lot more going on in December as far as, uh, you know, online posts and things. Um, I'm asking if we should clean up, like, should we unpublish stuff that's old or should we delete stuff that's super old? I think it never hurts to have an archiving system. Um, deleting, you probably want to avoid if you can. It's, it's, you can unpublish, have it as many unpublished items as you need. There's no limit. So um, unpublishing is always better than deleting. Um, but as far as the types of content, you probably want to have different policies. Um, like articles, well, events and action alerts take care of themselves because they expire on their own. Um, so articles, um, like Mary Jo said, m might make sense with uh, being up there for at least a year. Um, and then evergreen types of pages that uh, kind of just sit in your menu otherwise. Um, those are harder to, to tell because it could just be depending on the subject matter. Um, you might want to have them up for much longer. Um, but typically a, a year, I think, is a good amount of time to at least start off with. So I have a question about that because I, I was also doing webmaster work on a, on a different website where we use Weebly. And... Uh, and we would take things out of the menu so you couldn't navigate to them, but Google was still finding them. So when people was, was, uh, were doing Google searches, they were, they were finding these old things and it was like, you know, it was for a political party. So it was old campaign stuff and out of date oh, election stuff and things like that. So is there, does does Milo take care of making the things that you unpublish not visible to Google, or do we have to do something special to do that? No, it will take care of that. You 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 might notice that it could take a little bit of time for those addresses to completely drop off of searches. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as their access to it, it should be immediately uh, revoked if you've unpublished something. Okay. Yeah, because I did, I was able to go in and find a, you know, a setting that made it not visible, but I had to make sure I did that to everything that I didn't um, want to show up in the Google searches. And but but that was on Weebly. Oh, I see. Okay. But uh, uh, Marie, so the only mm -hmm. advantage to unpublishing versus deleting is that if you wanted to go back to it, right? Right. But I mean, if you know, I had a meeting and it was over a year old. Uh, I'm not gonna, I, I'm just deleting it. Why, you know, why, why clog up the work, so to speak? I, but, but you might have a meeting in two years similar to it and you could clone it right. and it save you time. That's true, but yeah, 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 that's true. You have to remember that it's there. Right. Yeah, but, yeah. But you can do a search and 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm, I guess I'm thinking more of, okay, I'm advertising a town hall or something. Okay, you know, I leave it on for a little while, maybe a year, so people get the idea of the kinds of things we do. But at some point, it doesn't make sense to keep it on, you know, to me. Yeah, it's totally up to each each league's discretion to have that stuff up or not. Um, and especially when it comes to events, um, or events and action alerts because they expire essentially on their own they stop displaying on the the public portion like the calendar and the action alerts list um they still exist technically but they're moved to display on like the past events right. list or right. the all action alerts list right yeah and if you wanted to clean those up then yeah you definitely can um unpublish or delete to also clean up your uh, webmaster list as well. You know, I know something on your page where it says inactive league sites. Maybe that's always been there. I just never noticed it. It's actually um, only available for the admins. Um, So like you, like, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't wouldn't be there otherwise. (laughs) (laughs) We don't need to show those off. Yeah. (laughs) She's special. (laughs) <laughs> there you go <laughs> you know i think people uh and how they manage their content is it, re- it reflects how their office looks and how their their <laughs> kitchen right. looks you know some people are neat nicks and some people uh, they just keep making you know making things piles of things they have over piles here of and papers <laughs> and, you know and so they're all styles for sure <laughs> Yeah, I'm one of the piles people. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so we should probably, uh, when when do you think we'll meet again then? Yeah, um, the next one uh, is going to be canceled, which would have been the 31st. So it, the next one will be January 14th. Um, okay. I will hopefully get the Google Calendar sorted out soon and you'll see that on the calendar either way i will um still post the reminder once we get back from vacation um, about that office hours okay thank you have a nice holiday everybody yes yeah same to everybody and um as usual thank you for a, a good session and we'll talk again in the google group yeah next year (laughs) <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Happy holidays, everyone.